Welcome to our course in Data Science Project and of course we're going to continue with our project which is uh, credit scoring. So in our last lesson we actually started with the modeling part of this project and for today's lesson we're going to do the proper modeling itself. So first and foremost what we are going to do is let's just have a step back to doing the cleaning part of our final data set to be used for this modeling. So first, um, we're going uh, to um, drop those rows which have null values. So here, what we used here is the drop no function. And of course, the subset will, will just be all the columns. So we just call that dot df, df dot columns, then dot values, because um, it's the values for each column that is the, the the main target of the drop function so next is that we're going to import the k-means from the scalearn.cluster and then um, we're going to instantiate our algorithm so as you could see here we have these parameters the n clusters which is equal to four the max iter iteration which is 1000 and random state would just be one two three but of course you can change the numbers that you can see in this one two three um parameters but for this one um the n clusters let's just um think that we have the four um maximum number of class clusters but of course later on we would be able to identify if this one is really correct or not so let's execute this one so here as you could see because we have already instantiated our algorithm then we call um the dot uh, fit function and then with that uh we call it df this one okay let's execute this one we have one parameter for that is a d so let's see what the labels are that labels or those labels and then after that uh the output of game is the cluster label of course and then we are going to attach labels to the original data frame. So we have a dfk4 that is uh, equal to df.copy. So we copy the df, which is our original um, data frame. And from that dfk4, um, we make another column, which is called label. And then we attach to this one, the k4 underscore labels, which are the labels here, this one, right? let's execute this okay that is dead then let's view what we have in here so this is our data set so at the end here the very last um column we can see the different labels so we just have here okay now let's count how many entries we have for each label okay so for zero we have 47,376. Then for one, we have 1,079. And two and three, um, they have um, 783 and 604, respectively. Now, let's vis visualize the clusters. and but, but for this one, we will just use the annual income and the age. Annual, annual income for our X and Y for our, I mean, age for our y so at least we have this kind of overview of what would be the clusters are or how these clusters look this may take some time okay now we already have the result let's do this one okay so it's not actually very much refined which are okay now let's go to setting our k so let's remember this that in our instantiation we have set the number of k to be just um four. But here the range that we have set here uh is one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so we have six. And then we have um even empty uh list of scores for each cluster. And with that um we compute the um the key means i mean the, the the range of the cluster for the particular um cluster okay and then we fit that k means to our data frame and then we compute for the number of score i mean for for the for the score 
the score here is the inertia then we append that to our empty list here so let's execute okay the computation is done so maybe you would want to ask me what is this one so this is actual inertia which is the computation of how far um, the particular point from the centroid or the center point of each cluster so we have this um, average um, score or inertia for each cluster now um, let's plot this one um, let's see how many um, groups that we have or clusters that we have so okay this is actually very fast because um, we just have a very few number of data points okay so as you could see we have one two three four five six now let's see which one has this kind uh okay we're in that the, in because in the elbow method you can actually see which one has the steepest angle there can be a lot of groups that we can make in here but um seeing this one it is one and two so it is one and two that has the you know the angle is very very much well defined so so with this one um we have two groups we have one and two only so let's settle for only two groups so how to do that we can actually change this one here you can rerun this to just two. Have this one, this, then you can actually have this. So now we only have two. Have the zero is forty-eight, forty-eight thousand seven hundred forty-four, and one is one thousand eight and now have we only have um two groups for now for this particular data set and this is actually very logical because um in the case of payment or a, a, a rating a certain customer whether he's a good payer or not a good payer so we only have two um yes or no so having only two groups zero and one would mean that um this is very logical and this this is very much connected to how a certain financial institution would grade or would decide if a particular customer belongs to a group which has the higher probability of uh, paying and those individuals or customers which have or which have very low probability of um, paying their own amount do you want to know more about this channel? Let's click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.